I'm James McDonough and watch my latest interview on Hibernian TV. James, can we start off by getting your verdict and reaction to the news that we've been drawn to face St Mirren in the fourth round of the Scottish Youth Cup, please? Yeah, it's a hard draw. Um, away from home, I prefer it to be at home. Um, there's a lot of teams in it from the lower leagues, so that would have been an ideal draw at home to get one of them. But if we can progress, it opens the draw right up for us and gives us a great chance. So it's a bit of mixed emotions. They've beaten us already, but we've beaten them. It'll be a tough game, but it focuses in mind. And It'll be a, a good game to go and play. Do you think that game will be staged at St Mary Park or St Anthony's or what's the general kind of feeling right now on that? I think it will be at their stadium. Well, that's what we're hoping for. I believe some are away from home that weekend, so it gives it a better chance. And uh, obviously we prefer that. It's a good surface. You know, suit our game. Um, we played at St Anthony's and we beat them, but I think to get it at the stadium would be ideal for us. Just rewinding back to the full time whistle and the celebrations and the noise generated in the uh, the West Lower. Were you surprised at how many fans turned out for the game? Because there was a really special atmosphere on the day, wasn't there? There was. I, I was maybe expecting that sort of amount because I, I'd heard a lot of people plan on coming to the game. But sometimes people talk about going to games and they don't go, so it was good to, to see them there. And yeah, I was, I, was, I was a wee bit surprised with the noise. It was like a proper game when we scored and obviously at full time. And it all adds to the experience for the players. And it's, it's vital that they get people in to watch them play. Do you feel that fifth round should we progress through to that and it, we, we do get given a home tie that you'd hope that it would be staged at East the Road again? That would be ideal, it's just depending on you know, games at the, the ground and what it ties in with. Um, it's not a decision we would make but I would want a home tie anyway because I know that the pitches at the training centre here are fantastic and they're guaranteed a good surface so if it's not East the Road we've got a great pitch here anyway and that's, that's the most important thing. But of course, if you get used to the road, you get the fans behind you and that experience of playing in the stadium again. Give everybody a lift the last time and probably helped us win the game, to be honest. Ross well, Caldwell training with the first team squad today here at East Mains on Thursday. Two wonderful goals against the Hearts. How would you evaluate his prog progress so far this season? He's done well. He's, um, he's scored more goal goals than he started games, which is good. And obviously, he got sent off in the first game, which set him and the team back a couple of games. but. He's settled down since then, I think he's scored a lot of goals and started 10 games, so he's done well. He knows that we weren't too impressed with his performance on, on Saturday up until he scored the first goal because he didn't really play that well. But again, if you show patience with Ross, he'll produce the goods and he came on in a game after he scored a goal. And he's, he's just a handful, he's sad, he's powerful, quick and he can put the ball in the goals. And he seems to have a wee thing over hearts just now, he seems to score every time he plays them, so it's good to see that. Talking about hearts, it's strange that in one off situations, be it the East of Scotland Shield or the Scottish Youth Cup, we always seem to beat them. In the league, it's the other way around. It, it's quite a fascinating kind of duel, isn't it, really? It is. I don't know how it's came about or how it still happens, but we can't beat them in the league and they, they can't beat us in the cup. And normally, when you talk about Hibs and Hearts, Hibs and Cups don't really match up, so we're just taking it as it comes and um, just keeping it going, hopefully. We'll We'll get turned around the league form next year when we play them. Really tough game this weekend, Saturday morning, uh, up at Aberdeen. Uh, how do you assess this one and what's the latest team news, please? Well, Aberdeen are one of the best teams we've played this season. I really felt we were lucky um, for 45 minutes against them. They, they hammered us and we couldn't get a grip of the game. But for the second 45 minutes, we reversed that and we hammered them. So a draw was a fair result, but we could we could have really lost that game quite, quite easily. So it's certainly a game that we need to be on our toes going up there. They're, um, they're, they're a good side and I think they're sitting fourth just now. Um, if we can beat them, it stretches us a wee bit. And we're, we've got pretty much a full strength squad to choose from, still apart from Matt Lancaster. Um, but our, you know, we've got there in good spirits and still even now, at this stage, still a wee bit tired from, from last week. So we'll just have to be careful with the players this week in training, not to pick up another couple of injuries. But it'll be a good game if we can go up there and win. It certainly pushes us a wee bit ahead of Aberdeen. And, it makes a difference in maybe challenging for top three rather than making it a two horse race for third to fourth uh, place. So um, I'm looking forward to it. What's the problem with Mark? Is uh, when we spoke to him after the Dunfermline game, he seemed that he would be fit and available for the derby, but he didn't make it, did he? Yeah, well, after that Dunfermline game, and the Tuesday after that, so basically the Tuesday before the Hearts game, he blocked a shot in training and he's um, done his medial ligament. So oh, he's been here for three or four weeks. Right. So he was a wee bit of a loss because we had to. 
change the team about to, to play that was, it was a natural left back so if they swap things about a wee bit um, it gives us a good balance in the team but we've got good players desperate to play so as you've seen on Saturday there's no looking back somebody falls out somebody else takes their place and that's the competition we've got in the squad which is good but um, we'll miss him and he might not play again now before Christmas so it's a, a shame for him. At the back Jordan Forster was a rock wasn't he, he was really impressive uh, how would you sum up the way that he's developed over the course of the season? He has, he's progressed. Um, I think him and Jack Wirth have formed a solid partnership for us. I've got two of them who standing against Hearts. Um, but talk about Jordan, he's, he made a lot of silly mistakes in pre-season. Um, he seemed to play really well for 95-98% of the game and was getting punished. He would maybe give away a penalty kick or he'd slip in the strike of a score or something you know, of that nature. But he seems to have stopped those mistakes. and. Um, hopefully continue if he can just stay focused and just concentrate on being a centre half. I think that's what he's improved. He runs his headers, runs his tackles, plays his position and um, he's done that well and that's given us a good basis to defend from. And since we lost the Rick we've only conceded one goal in four games so he's been a big part of that. How pleased are you with the way that he's contributed though because when you when you make the move to sign from Celtic, he'd obviously played for a couple of different teams as well, but he was almost coming home, wasn't he, back to Ibs and, and he seems to have really sort of flourished and blossomed since then. He has, he's settled down, he's taken a wee bit of time to settle down and he, he has done that, he's fighting well with the group and um, he's a good footballer, he likes to win and he's got a good attitude and if you've got any those qualities then you've got a proper chance of making it.